Okay, so in this video we will be looking at differentiation of the inverse trigonometric functions. So the inverse of sine x is written as sine to the power negative 1 of x, okay, the inverse of sine, okay, that's how we say it. Similarly, you've seen that we have the inverse of cos, so cos to the power negative 1x, and also the inverse of tan, which is tan to the negative 1x there, okay. How the inverse works, well, if we know sine of pi over 6 is a half, then we know the inverse of sine of a half would give us back our angle which is pi over 6 okay so sine and its inverse is the sine inverse okay the opposites of each other something to note that the inverse of sine does not mean 1 over sine x okay so for example x to the power negative 1 would be the same as 1 over x however sine to the negative 1 means inverse sine it does not mean it's 1 over sine x Okay, 1 over sine x, which we've seen in the previous video, actually is cosec x. Okay, and that's the reason why this is true, and it means that this is not true. Okay, so it means that that does not equal 1 over sine x. So something just to be careful of there. So we know we get sine inverse, cos inverse, and tan inverse. Okay, so we're going to use these to differentiate today. So we need a formula. Okay, and you're given this. So... If we differentiate sine inverse x, then we get 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, that's the standard formula you'll be given on your sheet. Inverse of cos x, that is the same as this one here, but the difference is it's negative. So you get negative 1 over the square root 1 minus x squared. Okay, so they're very similar, just cos is the negative one. The inverse cos has a negative in front. And the inverse of tan x, okay, if I differentiate the inverse of tan x, so tan inverse of x, I get 1 over 1 plus x squared, okay, so it becomes a plus and there is no square root for them. So these are our standardised formula that you have on your formula sheet and we will use these when we want to differentiate each of these three here. Okay, we'll look at three examples, one on each kind, to show you how these formulas work. So we'll start off with the first formula, y equals the sine inverse of 5x. Okay, well I'm going to use my standardised formula that I've seen. I know that the inverse of sine x, okay, differentiates to 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So the only difference between this here and this here is that instead of x, it's 5x. So that x squared will have to get replaced with 5x. I need to square it. Okay, so that will give me dy by dx equals 1 over square root of 1 minus not just x squared but it'll be 5x needing squared but then I need to remember to diff multiply it by the differential of inside the bracket and if I differentiate this bracket here is 5 so I need to multiply it by 5. I just need to tidy up my answer now so 5 goes on the top that's what I multiply by and if I do 5x squared okay that means I square the 5 which is 25 square the x and I get x squared so if I start off with sine inverse of 5x, if I differentiate that, I get 5 over the square root 1 minus 25x squared, and I use my formula here to help me obtain that. Okay, so you can see it can be a two-step process, these questions. Okay, use your formula to set it up, but remember you need to multiply by the chain rule part as well. Okay, let's go to the next example. Okay, we're going to look at a cos inverse question now. So... If I want to differentiate y equals the cos inverse of x squared, I look at my formula. Well, I know cos inverse of x differentiates to negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So let's start off with that formula. So dy by dx will be, well, it's going to be negative. So I put a negative at the front here. 1 over the square root of 1 minus, and it won't just be x squared, it'll be x squared needing squared. Okay, so this bracket here needs to be squared. So I've got x squared need to be squared there. I also need to multiply by the differential of this bracket. So if I differentiate x squared, I get 2x. We need to, need to multiply this by 2x. Okay, the 2x will go on the top. So my final answer is dy by dx equals negative 2x over the square root of 1 minus, if I deal with this bracket here, x squared, and if I square that, I get x to the power of 4. So it's x to the power of 4 on the bottom. Okay, so there's two examples. Using the standard formula, substituting in what's in the brackets in our formula, and then multiply, remember to multiply them by the chain rule part to get our final answer. Okay, we'll look at a third example that can be a little more complicated algebraically, however the process is still the same. So we're going to look at y equals the inverse tan of the square root of 3x minus 1. Okay, so 
If I rewrite that, because I know I'm going to have to differentiate this using the chain rule, that will be the tan inverse of 3x to the negative 1 to the power of half. Okay, so I'm looking to differentiate that there later on in my question. So I've got it set up more mathematically for me to use. Looking at my formula sheet, this is the formula I'm going to use. So the inverse tan of x differentiates to 1 over 1 plus x squared. So let's use this formula and substitute our values which we have in here into that formula. So, if I look at my question, instead of x, I've got root 3x minus 1, so it's going to be 1 over 1 plus 3x minus 1 to the power of half, which is what I had in my bracket here, and it needs to be squared because of the squared there, okay, so it needs to be squared there. I need to multiply that by the differential of this, so if I differentiate this inside the bracket here, I'm going to get a half bracket 3x minus 1 to the power of negative a half. But then I need to remember to multiply that part by inside this bracket here, which is the differential inside that bracket, which is 3. Okay, so it's the chain rule used there, okay, but I actually had to use it twice there. Okay, to differentiate this fully, I had to use another chain rule. So now it's just a case of tidying up. The good thing to notice here is that if I've got something to the power of half and I'm squaring it, it means that it becomes a whole. So the powers actually disappear. And here, if I times this by 3, I'm just going to get 3 over 2 with this bracket underneath in a square root. So let's deal with that just now. Okay, so this becomes to the power of 1 essentially. So I've got 1 over 1 plus 3x minus 1. Multiplying by that 3 times a half, so I've got 3 halves multiplied by the bracket 3x minus 1 to the power of negative a half. It's just about rearranging now, okay? We don't like negative power, so let's make that into a positive power. Okay, tidy up this bottom as well. So 1 over 1 plus 3x minus 1, well, the 1's cancel, so I've just got 1 over 3x there. So 1 over 3x times 3 over 2 lots of square root of 3x minus 1. Last thing I can tidy is that the 3's on the top and the bottom will cancel. So I am left with my final answer of 1 over 2x square root of 3x minus 1. Okay, so there are three examples that show you how these formulas work. Okay, the key things are today is how these examples work, but also using the three formulas that we have written here. Okay, thank you.